Byron Donalds appeared on The Breakfast Club. I did a quick, quick reaction to it yesterday on the Anton Daniels channel. But I also wanted to make sure that I addressed it, the full context of some other parts for it on here. Make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm, subscribe to the channel, and turn on your notifications. I want to show two parts on this. Let's see if I can scrub through and find it really quick. Because uh, this just shows that people that support Kamala Harris, I think that they might be slightly less intelligent than the rest of us. Let me see if I can find it. I was going down in New York. Yep. I can't really speak to that. But what I also... It was all over the paper. I, oh, I know. It was, was, all, it was everywhere. Let me see if I can find it. We're allowed in Mar-a-Lago. He desegregated that. Allowed black... Well. And we, so that, that work is just as important. It's something that might, he might have said back then. What I mean is that the reforms in the First Step Act did undid in part some of the issues in the 94 crime bill. Not totally. Mm -hmm. Not totally. It dealt with the sentencing of those people who, were re who either had their sentences reduced or were released. And their convictions were in... Mm. And his thoughts on the uh, whole... Uh, Hold on. Hold on. Eating... Go ahead. And yeah. what was oh, what's up, Angela? Sorry. Just on this, on this yeah. same point... Um, you talked about taking the man in his totality. Yeah. So one of those things in his totality is what happened on January 6th, which was your first term in Congress. Yeah. Do you think he should be held accountable? Donald Trump should be held accountable for his role. I want to get to um, an issue that people keep bringing up. <clears throat> and one of the things they keep talking about, because I'm tired of hearing about this whole January 6th thing. One of the things that I want to talk about is, A, um, the whole making sure that the police can't be prosecuted thing or whatever, something like that. Um, immunity. Talking about immunity because I hear that a lot from Democrats. Thank y'all for the super chats. I'm going to be reading those shortly. Immunity. And then also when he was talking about a couple of other things that he was sauteing them on as far as Kamala Harris and uh, her ability to continue to cause inflation. So those are two, two subjects I'm trying to scrub through to make sure that we address. Congressional baseball practice of Republicans to shoot it up was because he felt that Republic 10,000 National Guard troops. I'm on the Oversight Committee. Mario Bowser signed a letter on, on January 5th, one in the... So your question is, well, did he, did he incite a riot? Well... More than 1,200 people have been charged yeah. in nearly all... Hey, Philando Castile, he was with the crime bill, which I object, but I'll let you finish your point. Fair. So let me respond to a couple things. Number one, the, sure. George Floyd, the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. There were actually two bills that were moving through the United States Senate that year. There was mm -hmm. the George Floyd Policing Act that you discuss, and there was the yeah. bill that was written by Senator Tim Scott. They were both moving, yes. through, both through the, moving through the Senate, right? The Tim Scott bill is the one that could have got signed into law. It was essentially a mirror image of the George Floyd bill, except for qualified immunity. The difference exactly. between those two bills, and Angela, you just acknowledged it, the only difference between those two bills was qualified immunity. The issue with qualified immunity is very simple. If you remove qualified immunity from policing, you're going to have less officers on the street. Police officers make what? Seventy, eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000 a year? They have, a, most law, law enforcement has about $40 million or more encounters every single year with citizens. Under, if you remove qualified immunity, I'm telling you this right now because I've talked with law enforcement of officers all across the country, not the chiefs, the officers, they will not be working these communities. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I'm Brian B. Now, this is so funny. I'm glad that you said this. Because we always got, especially in the black community of people that don't understand laws, they don't understand police interactions, and they don't understand that police officers are often the ones that get hurt 10 times more than the people that they're policing. And that is a fact. And so when I see people that automatically say this, and then they leapfrog off of these democratic talking points and saying, well, police need to be held accountable. No, a police officer that does something that he's not supposed to do needs to be held accountable and often at times is held accountable. But people truly don't understand police immunity. And this is why you need people like Byron Donald to explain to you what the difference is because a democratic talking point versus a fact is different. Listen to what he says and then help me to understand whether or not you know what you're talking about. I'm from Crown Heights, Brooklyn. I may not have always loved having the police in my neighborhood. And that's just a thing from a kid. I may not have always loved it.
But when I needed them, they were there. And a lot of our officers today, they're black, they're Hispanic, they're white. So removing qualified immunity only lowers the, the number of officers in communities. What we're seeing right now is a movement of policing from states where they're not really respecting law enforcement to states where they do, or there's not that moral support for law enforcement. I was in my district yesterday. I was talking with an officer who's from Philadelphia. He was a Philadelphia officer. He now is a Fort Myers officer. I asked him, I said, well, why'd you make the move? He goes, because up there, there was no support for me as an officer for what I love to do, which is serve my community. So I said, enough is enough. I'm a move. He went to Florida. My, my sheriff in Florida, he's like, I have more applications coming from officers who are in states or in localities where they're not getting the, the moral support or whatever they need to continue to do their job day in, day out. And so they're leaving. Well, who does that hurt? That hurts. That hurt. Who does that really hurt, though, Charlemagne? Yeah, because if you, trying, trying, in the, in the, if you don't have officers on the streets or officers, you know, in urban areas, who's really left in that lurch? Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out what, what does qualified immunity have to do with having less police officers? Because, so why would that... because the economic... So Charlemagne is showing his ignorance, as usual, but Byron Donald is going to explain it to him and then we're going to leapfrog off of it. Incentive of qualified immunity means that your personal assets aren't gone after if something goes wrong. So, it, you know, you're in business, you're in business. Do you get involved in a project or a deal that leaves you massively exposed financially? You may, depending on your passion for that project, but then you also sit back and think, now, wait a minute, if something goes wrong, I'm going to be held massively liable. But you, but you but Maybe I need to do when something else with nothing goes wrong, we're talking about people getting violently yeah. hurt or killed. Yeah, clearly. And I think when people not, that you yeah. rushed over. But, but it's I'm, when, I'm when somebody clearly that. violates the constitutional right. And when, you're, when you violate a constitutional right, qualified immunity doesn't apply to you. And that's what I'm talking about. It does not. And Angela, don't do that. It does not. If I, thought you, that was the I thought that was the definition. I thought <laughs> that was the definition. No, it does not. I thought that was the definition of qualified immunity. No, it does not. If you, op, if you carry yourself outside of the confines of your training and the protocols of that department, qualified immunity doesn't apply to you. Thank it you. Does. People are so ignorant. So when I see people on a regular basis try to argue these democratic talking points and all of this stuff that they just keep getting from Kamala Harris and Tim Walls and all of the rest of these Jasmine Crockett's and AOC, they don't know what they're talking about. Qualified immunity does not absolve you from being held responsible for your actions as a police officer, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to show you that text, that chat on here before he even explained it is because most people don't know what they're talking about. If you follow the training, and you follow the protocols based off of what you were you were told to do in your police department, then that is when you get qualified immunity because you followed the law and you followed your training. When you step outside of that as an individual, you are held accountable. That is what it means. It means that you can't hold me accountable for the thing that I was trained to do in dealing with the crime and the problems and the issues that's within the community. And so... The laws are on the books. When you see these people like a Charlemagne or Angela, Angela Rye, and they jumping on CNN and they saying all of this dumb stuff, they don't know what they're talking about. They're, they're spewing talking points. They don't know policy. They don't know law. They don't understand and they have not talked to one police officer that can probably educate you and give you some more insight on why you need to align yourself with laws, policy, uh, policies, principles, and actually better understand what you're trying to debate against people like a Byron Donald. Thank God we got a person like a Byron Donald that can more or less explain to these people and help them to understand why they're wrong. But so many people are walking around with the veil over their eyes thinking that they know what they're talking about, and they don't. They don't. Not true. It, that is very true. That is very that true. Is patently that false. is patently false. How can you tell a Byron Donald who is a legislator what the law is? This is how ignorant Angela Rye is, the new Tesla Figaro. Listen to what she's saying. Not to you. It That's does not, not true. It, that is very true. That is very that true. Is that false. is patently true. No, no, that is patently that is true. true. And we need to make sure we have that accurate. We cannot make that statement because you have a lot of officers out here who do their job with honor and dignity and respect for the people that they serve. Well, they says, do. Okay, listen, qualified immunity is a legal doctrine that protects government, government officials from civil lawsuits when they perform their jobs unless they clearly violate a constitutional right. That's exactly what I'm saying. And what is a violation of that right is when they're outside the norms of their training and the protocols of that department or that agent. Or that. Charlemagne literally just read it. She up there arguing something that she don't know. Charlemagne reads it directly to her, and she's she's trying to tell him 
how he's wrong and he's actually a legislator. Honestly, arguing with Democrats that are ignorant, that think that they smart is, is like beating up on a wall. It's fighting a wall. It's, 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 it's crazy. And then they'll see, no, I see people, no police officers, qualified immunity. That mean they'll be just be able to do whatever they want to do as long as they got the badge on. That's not what it means. That's not what it means. We need to read. We need to understand. We need to talk to people that actually can educate you and give you some insight so you'll stop acting like an idiot and saying stuff that you don't know what you're talking about because now you're going to look like a fool. You're going to look like a fool. And this is why people like him exist. Now we just need to be able to promote it and, and educate people so that they'll better understand exactly what's going on. People have no clue whatsoever. But shout out to Byron Donald. Shout out to Byron Donald because he was on a breakfast club. Same thing J.D. Vance be doing. Byron Dono be doing it. He be cooking up in the kitchen. Chef Boyar B. Shout out to Chef Boyar B. Byron in the building. He up there cooking up on the Breakfast Club. I'm surprised they even let people like him up on the platform. Too smart. Too smart to be sitting there negotiating with them. Crazy. <laughs> 